This strange looking contraption is basically a variation on an airlift pump. You can look up an airlift pump, but the basic idea is that if you inject air at the bottom of a tube that is submerged in water, then as the air rises in the tube, water will also be forced out of the top of the tube. And the reason I'm doing this is that I recently noticed that when I moved some shard plants out of my circulating system made out of three inch tubes that the roots were like eight inches long and I, it occurred to me that I really need to build a system that allows these plants to really develop their full root growth. And this is resulting in a shift towards a form of deep water culture where this, this piece of equipment is going to be uh, an integral part of the system in the sense that I, it's going to do two things for me. It's going to increase the amount of air in the nutrient solution and because of these things here, these intakes, it's going to pull the nutrient from the bottom of the tank and mix it uh, into the top of the tank so that should be good for the plants as well might comment that you know this sideways extension of this could actually be several feet which means that you could use something like this for deep water cultivation in a four by eight flood tray and it would keep that whole thing circulating so what's going on at this point is that there's a quarter inch hole there this black line that I got from a pet shop for aquariums uh, easily fits through that hole. And so what I figured out how to do was to take about an inch and a half of this line and you know push from the bottom of the tube and get this line going up inside the tube. And then it's also connected here with a small zip tie to keep it in place. Just want to point out that all of these connections are just pushed together. There's no glue involved in doing this. It's not under pressure. It doesn't matter if it leaks a little bit of air and water. So this makes for easy construction. You can cut this half inch PVC pipe, uh, you know, with an ordinary hand saw, jigsaw, coping saw, any kind of saw. So here are the airlift pumps installed in the reservoirs I'm going to use. These are just a couple of totes I've had laying around for a long time doing nothing. They're probably uh, 17 gallons each. And in the middle, the blue object is a 20 gallon whisper pump for aquariums. I like these whispers because they are very quiet compared to some other pumps on the market. Okay, here you can see how the pump is mounted below. Uh, the concrete blocks have been turned sideways to provide a shelf. There's a scrap of plywood in there for the actual shelf. And then it's sitting on a couple of blocks of, you know, flexible foam to soak up some of the noise and vibration. This doesn't make very much noise, but it certainly is better to not have this on any kind of a resonant surface. Okay, so here we're going to have the acid test to see if what happens when I start to run this system? Okay, so what I'm finding out here is that this 20 gallon unit does not have enough power to run both these pumps. When I first started it up, you could see there was nothing happening on the left side and there was on the right side. Now, by lifting it up and putting it down, the left side pump is running, but the right side pump is not. So this means basically I need to get another unit or get a bigger unit, you know, probably get a, a 40 gallon since this is 20 gallon, maybe even bigger to provide more power. So we're off to Petco to uh, acquire a bigger pump. I would say though that if you're just planning to build um, one reservoir uh, that um, you know something like this will work very well. So what we're going to do is fill it up to above the level of the reservoir. I don't think that'll affect the performance. It's still an issue. Although it might provide back pressure on this one to see. So something you saw is that as I filled up the reservoir, this one stopped 
and this one started to work so it's kind of a pressure balancing act on this the thing is is that this reservoir has to be filled up to a certain depth to accommodate the uh, floating uh, top of the plants you do see that the um, you know the pump is moving a nice amount of water and air and things like that so it's the right idea I may just buy another uh, 20 gallon pump rather than this since we know it will do the job that way you have kind of a redundant system so the next question is going to be will this actually circulate the water to any degree um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some liquid seaweed which I use for trace minerals into the side of the reservoir that's closer to me and then we're going to see whether it's going to spread throughout the reservoir okay so you can see that the water coming out of the pump now has a brownish tinge which means that it's soaking up you can see the seaweed spreading along the bottom um, and you can see the to some extent you can see the rest of the water slowly kind of turning brownish which is what the color you get from the seaweed stuff so I would say um, this is a successful proof of concept in terms of uh, this 20 gallon pump at least working on this one thing here when I first put this thing together I was uh, supporting it with these two 1x4 boards what I found out when I filled up the totes which are kind of light duty totes was that they begin to bulge on the sides in ways that would ultimately result in a um, you know leak in the thing now there are stronger totes available I think those black totes that are typically available from Lowe's and Walmart and Home Depot are reputed to be quite strong. So my solution to the problem with the bulging containers was to cut a piece of half inch chipboard about 19 by 36 inches and lay that under the totes. Um, if I was buying materials as opposed to using what's laying around I'd probably buy at least three quarter inch plywood for this kind of application. So this is the final part of that system, which is a board for holding plants. Made this out of a uh, quarter inch plywood I had laying around. And just cut these holes about every six inches. Uh, it's a little bit less, but anyway. Um, you know, and, and on the back of these, I have these formular blocks for suspension or for flotation. I calculated that a square foot of this formular would hold about five pounds of water would displace about five pounds of water so you know 75 percent of that is um, three and a half pounds or so it's actually a little bit longer it's 14 inches so this is close to four pounds of um, displacement on these things so here's how the system looks put together I've moved all the basil out of the uh, other system the circulating system into here also put in some uh, baby basils here from my nursery. Some of these are kind of tough looking, but we'll see how they go. And also, back there is an experiment in throwing some basil seeds into a, a foam block to just see if they'll come up under these conditions. That would be nice, save some effort. Also want to point out this is the same thing with romaine lettuce so it'd be nice to be able to eliminate a step and just have them come up um, the conditions here are really not that different from the conditions in the basement